Hello and welcome to Milo and Marcus Garage. As you can see, once again, we've been given some help with the, you know, audio and video part of this with our wonderful cameraman, Sindra Lund, with his soon-to-be-made company for in, like, photo stuff. So, you know, big thumbs up to him. Anyways, today we are working on the Honda CX500 project. Uh, as you might remember from last time, we have taken the carburetors off, we've taken lots of different parts of the gas actuator off, uh, ready to be replaced. Off camera, uh, I decided to just, you know, because lately I've been really busy producing music, making, you know, working for other customers, uh, and like, you know, school sometimes, although not really that often. <laughs> Corona. Uh, well, uh, what happened off camera is I, after cleaning the carbs, I've managed to put them on the bike. I also uh, put on the new uh, gas actuator right here. It works just fine, although it's a bit hard on the throttle. It accelerates reasonably fast, so I don't think a throttle that's a bit heavy will be a problem. But, there is a problem with the carburetors. Uh, what happened is that after I installed the carbs uh, and obviously turned the fuel on, I tried to... Uh, also, the choke is finally working. It's a really good thing because before it was a bit of a pain to start the bike. Um, but I turned the fuel on, I turned the bike on and surprise, surprise, it ran! on two cylinders and started to sound like a Harley Davidson on a straight pipe. Uh, but after a few seconds I start smelling gas and I think, okay, what is going on? And then I start seeing a puddle forming on the floor, just full of gas, and basically the carbs are pissing gas and in like really, really big amounts of, you know, big, large quantities, as in it's just pouring gas down there and it's going directly onto the uh, starter, the electric starter of the bike, which is, you know, obviously something that you don't want gasoline on, because electric starters sometimes spark, and if that spark suddenly, you know, matches with gas being poured down there, then, well, we've got ourselves a little bit of a fire hazard. I even had, like, a fire extinguisher laying here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Uh. I even had a fire extinguisher ready while I was working on the bike just because I saw that the fuel was pissing. So I just clocked, tried to, you know, plug it up with a cloth, but, you know, it's just way too bad to actually work on the bike while it's running. The plan for today mainly is A. This little thing, uh, which is fuel safe silicon gasket material. Uh, although gasket material is not the perfect solution for this because gasket material doesn't harm as much as standard silicon does but this is fuel safe meaning that fuel will not dissolve this thing um, so my plan is just to try to plug up the carburetor where it's leaking I know this sounds very you know redneck and terrible but the problem with this is a the bike is really old so parts are rarely available where I am, and B, the parts that I found that were available cost, uh, like, if if I wanted to change the carburetors for original ones, I would have to pay around 6,000 krona, which is, you know, this much dollars, and that's a lot of dollars, so I'm not, you know, interested in paying too much, so we're going redneck on this and just, you know, sealing up whatever is leaking, and from what I found out, uh, the leakage mainly appears to be in the uh, aluminium pipe that connects the left carburetor with the right carburetor, basically doing... Um, I'm pretty sure that the O-rings in that pipe are shot. Normally, it would be quite easy to change them, just, you know, take up the pipe, change the O-rings, put them back into the carbs. But the problem is, the pipe is stuck on the left carb, and I've tried to remove it with some lubricants, with slight force, and it's not budging. And I'm certain that if I use more force, it's going to break. And that fuel pipe, because it's not a fuel line, it's an aluminium straight pipe. If that breaks, I will have to drill out the carbs 
and I'll, I will have to look for a part that's pretty much not, you know, available unless you're buying the, you know, two cards as a package. So, again, we're going redneck, redneck on this. B. The little rubberized air intakes that, you know, connect the carburetor with the air filter. Uh, they, I've, I've been, I've tried to put them on and the rubber is just so hard, so hardened from, you know, just being outside for years and years and years. It's surprisingly not cracked, so that's, that's a good thing, because if, if they would be cracked, then this would be just garbage, right? But they are not cracked, they are just really hard. So my plan is to uh, just warm them up in water, because uh, I know that this is an old trick for some, for rubber parts, rubber hoses, stuff like that. If you use warm water on this stuff, it's going to become more malleable and thus maybe I can manage to put them on the bike because right now the carbs are just running straight air from you know the surroundings which is neither healthy for them and not and nor basically good because obviously the carbs are tuned to be working with a air intake and right now they're not so they're, they are obviously out of tune which I can hear by you know flames out of the exhaust which is um, something that occurs quite often um, so yeah that's the plan for today without further ado let's get straight into it alrighty uh, so first off we're going to we will be to uh, we are going to just take the carburetors off uh, I've pretty much shown you the way they are taken off in a previous video so I don't think I'm gonna um, put too much time into that but you know I think it's still valuable to show it with the you know like seriously better equipment better sound better lighting better everything um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm loosening the intake manifold brackets. These are fairly simple to loosen, just, you know, standard screwdriver. And thus, I can gently, maybe not so gently, I'm gonna need some force to that. Let's try this. Last time it went pretty smoothly. So I hope I can get a similar result. Okie dokie, managed to, uh, to get these carbies loose. Uh, the rest is, you know, pretty straightforward. You take out all the wires connecting the gas and the choke, and you take the carbies off. You've already seen this in a previous video, so I'm not going to be showing it off. So I'll bring you back once I've got these carbs taken off and ready to be fixed. Alrighty, uh, the carburetors have been detached from the bike and I found something interesting. Do you see this little hosey dozy here? Well, this little hosey dozy has a hosey dozy on the other carb. And I think they might need to be connected. Is this, the our, is this our ratio of leakage? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Who knows? But, I am going to investigate, watching the previous videos, if this thing was connected or not. And also I'm going to look into the service manual to double check what the hell this thing is. Because if this is a gas return, then uh, this will be an easy fix. If it's not, well then, um, we'll continue with our plan. Alright, I will see you later when I figure out what this little thing is for. You know, we've uh, tried to find out what these little hosey dozies do, but um, to our surprise, the service manual actually doesn't show what they do. It doesn't show them at all. It's like they're not there, which is a bit strange, but it might be due to, you know, the service manual perhaps being from a different year, although it shouldn't be. But I found this little hose, which I used on... Um, on a grass trimmer repair for a while ago uh, and I think it might just fit <laughs> to my surprise 
let's see if that fits. Oh, would you look at that? Look at that fitment. See this little green thing here? It looks like it was meant to be there. Perfect fit. That's absolutely wonderful. The only thing we need to do then is just cut to length, put it in there, and then um, see what happens, because we've got absolutely no idea what this does. My guess, fuel, fuel return line, but who knows? We'll see. Worst case scenario, you know, bad for me, good content for you. So let's get into that. Alrighty, uh, as you can see, we've got this lovely little test set up here to check for leaks. In theory, when I open the reserve right here, it would just start gushing fuel. Gushing fuel? Huh? Ah. Hmm. Yes. I think we still might have a problem. Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay, let's turn that off before I lose all the fuel. Um, that definitely did something. Yeah, that might actually mean that my float is stuck. Because uh, we saw fuel coming from here, from here, pretty much everywhere. And that would usually indicate a stuck float valve just flooding. Because you saw there was nothing, no, no, you know, no flooding here, which is very good. So we might have a stuck float, and if so, that should not be that big of a deal. So let's try to open that carb up. All right, um, we've disassembled the bowl of the carburetor. The bowl itself seems to be in a, well, in the same condition that I've left it in. Why is that open? I don't think it should be open. Maybe it should. I don't know. Ah, uh, yes, it's the... Ah! You know what? This explains a lot of things. If you remember, the float was... The, the carbon was pissing out this hole here. This thing goes up to here, which is the top of the float bowl. Meaning that this little thing here, this is a flood protection measurement. So when the float, float bowl is too full, Instead of it going into the engine, it dumps it out onto the ground. Which is pretty smart. Mm, but that gives us reasons to believe that this float isn't really floating. Hmm. It's a bit strange. It does, uh, yeah. Hmm, how do I test this? Uh, I need to blow air through here, have this one open, and seal this one and see if I get any difference. camera yeah <laughs> oh shit <laughs> I forgot that there's still tons of fuel in this bowl here only it's this this one here it's empty okay but I think um, yeah <laughs> shit. Ah, I'm going to dry myself up all right uh, the plan for now is remove the float and check the seal on this thing because mm, this might be our issue and if so an easy thing to fix Whoop. perfect now with this thing out of the way the float pin and this thing out of the way is gently 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 ooh aha and this is the actual float valve and if the float is leaking, 
this is the thing that would be causing the problems and let's check for any damage in it hmm. seems to be all right uh, I wonder if it sits all good it's hard to test because in order for me to actually properly test this carburetor not both of them but this one I would have to disassemble the entire unit which is such a pain in the arse that I'm just not going to do it it's easier to just you know calculate the risk uh, you know maybe I should have done this and maybe it would have helped me but you know it would take me at least 40 minutes to assemble and dis disassemble and assemble these two carbs so I'm not interested in doing that but 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 uh, generally everything else in here oh look at that I think I know what this thing does and it is indeed a return look there's a hole here if I tilt carburetor you see little bubbles going this way Whoop, and gas filling up the bowl so this is some sort of gas leveling return thing I have never seen this before but there are lots of things I haven't seen in this carb. This is just a strange carb, generally speaking. Hmm. Now, the question is how is this will be just. This will open it. No, this doesn't do anything. It's just a springy wingy. Uh, why then it wouldn't stay closed? <laughs> hmm. This is quite strange, but I'm going to presume that we fixed the problem. Put this thing back in and check because if it should by just by just by gravity be closed now so uh, no I need to open this one up in order for this one to work uh, the pain of having two carburetors back with the float pin gently does it though we don't want to break any parts which are pretty much irreplaceable now uh, this goes up and down like this oh yeah and now if I tilt this a little bit of gas that's fine now let's try to blow the horn one one more time so this is open this should be able to close and open It does indeed seem to be opening and closing because I can feel resistance when I put this when I close this. So I'm going to presume presume they fixed it. Only presume. I don't know. Maybe. Let's let's hope so. Worst case scenario, we are just going to open it up once more. Now is that sitting good? Yes it is. Because, you know, worst case scenario, I can just prop this thing up, but I wouldn't really like to do it because this is a safety feature meant to keep, um, meant to keep the bike from over revving in case the carburetor fails. Like, because imagine your carburetor fails and there are no safety features in here. What would happen is basically your motorcycle would suddenly get a large sum of fuel into its chamber that would not stop. Uh, the bike would just continue to rev and rev and rev and rev. And, you know, this is okay if the bike is in neutral, then you just turn it off. But imagine you're going 100 kilometers an hour on a highway and that happens. You don't really want that. 
because that could lead into, you know, crashing, severe injury or death, which is, you know, not really fun. So, um, this is a good safety feature, which normally, I mean, I can see that it works, because obviously if that thing was dumping gas, that means that the float ball is getting too much fuel. It's plain and simple. Okay, we've got this installed, back together, and now what we can do woo, 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 is plug this back in and test. Will it work? Who knows? Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm not having high hopes, but just maybe, maybe, with the spirit of Christmas, this will work. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, hmm, that's not too bad. Seems pretty dry. Now the question is, do we have fuel in the gas tank? Because uh, if we don't, I've got an answer to why it is so dry. I'm going to take this off, see if there's gas blowing out. Yes, it is! Ladies and gentlemen, it would seem that we have managed to fix the carburetor without needing to use silicon sealant. It's great news! In that case, we're going to try to mount the carbs back on the bike and see if it'll fire and run. Alrighty, so as you can see we've started to be to fit these rubber thingies here and after boiling them in hot water they are really nice and soft. It's actually quite easy to put them in here in comparison to you know my last attempt. It was a complete failure. It's not easy but easy is not fun. Or, well, sometimes it is, <laughs> but it's a lot better than it was, because it's just, the rubber itself is so malleable right now that I can actually, you know, properly attach this thing, and, well, there we go, it's attached, that was pretty, pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> Alrighty, so we fitted the carburetor onto the bike, and this is the moment of truth. Did our work fix it? And we really hope we do, because we've struggled about an hour, maybe, roughly, with the rubber uh, air inlets, like these boots here. They were an absolute pain in the arse. But without further ado, I am now turning the fuel on. Fuel is on. It's going to take some time for it to flow through everything. But if we see no leaks, then this is truly a mission successful. So far? Yeah. Nothing. Hmm. Can we perhaps start the machine? You know, the last time when I turned the fuel on, it immediately started to run. Now I'm looking. I am looking. And I see nothing. Oh, I think we are eligible for a wee bit of a start, shall we? All right. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, the carbs are still leaking a bit, a lot less than before, though. So it's still leaking from the float, and that is easily fixable without, you know, really needing to take the carburetor off. At least I hope so. <laughs> but we'll try for a start anyways and see how it goes. All right, here goes nothing.
All right. Uh, so as you've probably saw, uh, the bike is running. Yay! It's running on two cylinders. Mm, kind of. It's better than before. It's better than before. Um, but it's not perfect yet. But we've been, you know, trouble, um, trouble checking basically what's running and what's not. It's a lot better than a couple of hours ago. I mean, in comparison, it's just a couple of droplets uh, instead of just. So, progress? Yes. Fixed? Mm, no, not really. Uh, our thesis is that the float bowl, no, not the float bowl, but the float itself is hanging up somehow and it just, you know, just keeps giving gas until it starts flowing through the overflow valve. Uh, so, um, yeah, basically, uh, plan ahead is to remove the float bowl, remove the float, and trying to find out to just how how uh, how the float is you know sticking. Why is it sticking? Can I fix it? If not, can someone else fix it? Stuff like that. But basically, either way, good progress for the day. Uh, and yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thank you to our cameraman for helping us uh, create you know quality entertainment for uh, you know YouTube. Mm, yes. Um, yeah. Go ahead, leave a like. Comment maybe, got any questions regarding the CX, uh, I don't know that much, but I might be able to help if you're, uh, you know, if you've got any good tips regarding the CX, I am really, 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 I would really appreciate those kind of tips, because this bike is, you know, quite rare in Norway, and as always, subscribe, and as always, keep on riding.